Greetings and salutations, all you beautiful individuals. It is Lee Guy Unlock, Eric and Mark here with you beauties for the first global power rankings in the summer split. Obviously, very early, so things going to be a little bit up in the air for a lot of these squads. And like did with the LCS and LEC, we're testing the waters on a little bit of tier listing instead of going 20 to 10, breaking the teams into a couple of different groups. We'll see what the people think if we keep going this way or go back to 20 and 10, but uh, we're trying for now these tier lists. Yeah, I like to try it out, and I think that one of the best things about making a change like this is it allows you to kind of talk about these teams in more of a general zone, general power level on where we're finding them in our tier list compared to having that nailed down position, spot, number, all those type of things where at the beginning of the split, you're going to have that fluctuation. You're going to have these question marks still remaining on a couple of those teams before you'd want to maybe nail them down to those specific numbers in a top 20 type of list. And we're still going to go bottom to top. So when you bust out the tier list board immediately, you look at that bottom and you see the eh, tier. That's not the A as in really dropping the Canadian accent in there. That's the eh, scratching your head. What are these teams doing? And the honorees the first week are NIP, LNG, and the defending LEC champion G2 Esports. Now, G2 of all three of these squads, I don't think they're going to be hanging out here long, but even at 3-2, and two, we've talked on it. Two out of their three wins barely should have even been wins. It's like going to a food court and seeing a couple of those food items and, and you know, you're you're not so sure on if it's going to be your ticket to the golden lunch, that best meal that you're going to have. That's what we're looking at in this A tier when you're talking about a couple of these squads scratching your head. And G2 is that first one you're mentioning because that's that question. You've maybe seen this item. You've seen that burger before. You've had it and it's tasted great. You've had it just a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month ago at MSI time. And it was fantastic. And then the LEC split has rolled around and you've seen the current form. And you're starting to look at that burger. You're starting to see some mold on that bun. And you are questioning whether this is the ticket that you want to eat. Hey, man, sometimes your favorite restaurant can give you food poisoning. You know, that's just the nature of You don't stop going to the restaurant. You give it the one pass. Okay, hopefully next time it's fine. Hopefully the next couple of weeks, G2 starts sorting things out. NIP and LNG obviously have been at the forefront of Fraud Watch. And as we're doing this, you know, we're on... We're on the ebb or the flow of NIP where they had a clean 2-0 against IG or the bottom feeder in their group. But the tides of NIP have been so up and down this split. Part of the nature of being on Fraud Watch is you have the times, as you mentioned, this ebb and flow where we see the performance. You see those signs that give you life, that you want to jump in, you want to say, this squad is a team that is moving up, that has the heat, has the passion to get there. But when you're looking at NIP, you're looking at LNG, for the very least for me, still in that fraud watch zone, you got to prove it. You got to earn your way out of this type of one for me. So I need to see some more results on the board, more convincing results on the board from NIP as well as LNG, which yes, LNG as of very recently has started to turn up, has started to show a little bit more performance. One of the things to note with that is your boy Scout has been on Malzahar duty for that one. And I think anybody can recognize, no matter your mid lane experience or not, Malzahar duty is not one you're being put on when you're at your ultimate prime of what you got going on in lane. Malzahar duty is kind of like handing you the mop and bucket and saying, you're cleaning the bathrooms tonight, Scout. Uh, you know, you're, you're still on the squad. You're still here with the team, but... Haven't been playing at a high enough level. So, yeah, they got to bounce back against Rare Adam. But still, very big question marks for both NIP and LNG. And you'll notice Weibo also on Fraud Watch. They're not even in this tier. They're still chilling in the F tier. They got even further to climb than these two LPL squads. Then you get to the more traditional tier listings as we go into that D tier, which if you're looking at report cards, it's a passing grade. And, oh, look at that. It's... A lot of Western squads hanging out here. These are kind of the contenders hoping to be title contenders in both the LCS and LEC. LEC side of things, two four and one squads, SK and BDS. More surprised at the start from SK than BDS, obviously. 
yeah, I think BDS is one of those teams that the expectation is that you would be at the very least mentioned in this type of list, this type of conversation when we're talking about the teams and the power levels and where we're finding them. But for a squad like SK, this is absolutely an overachievement. And I say overachievement because nowhere close to the expectations anybody would have had for this roster, for this change that they specifically made down in the bottom lane for this team. That has been where you have seen the biggest and most significant change for them. I think that one of the things obviously important to check in with is, of course, the mid lane with Niski. I think he's been pretty solid and even more so irrelevant in the top side. Has been one of those guys that we have talked about being that stable option, being that top presence for the team has been extremely valuable early on in this split. And uh, don't look now, but the three best AD carries in the LEC are three Koreans from tier two leagues. <laughs> Yeah, we we're going to ignore that one that is cer certainly emerging mighty fast as a topic to discuss in the LEC. But right now, focusing in on the positives for a squad like SK and heck, even a team like F uh, Fnatic, making sure that they can get the edge ahead of them when you're talking in, in one of these type of things where that head to head came from. That's where we're finding that SK, yes, even if you do get that bit of a drop back. You're surviving okay in this team. Yeah, and they were completely competitive, had moments very back and forth, uh, best of one against Fnatic. So still plenty of positive takeaways for them. The two LCS squads, obviously, as we've talked about, 100 Thieves had the much cleaner start, but they had an easier competition than Cloud9 uh, against a struggling NRG. But both 100T and Cloud9 bouncing back from that first game loss, feeling pretty good after week one. And kind of the comment here should be more so about, okay, you're seeing Cloud9, you're seeing 100 Thieves appear here, really is a statement about where G2 has started. This LEC split, how bad it has been from them to have such a fantastic MSI and fall down in the eyes compared to where we have seen Cloud9 come through with Thanatos and, and really see them in a best of three for the LCS and seeing the firepower that should be there to some type of level and even knowing that, well, you can really ask for a little bit more from the car here for Cloud9. You can ask for more from Jojo Pyun in the mid lane specifically for me. And then 100 Thieves, as you mentioned, the one that we did see a little bit more clean performance. Obviously, I think a difference in what we saw from Dignitas as the opponent and our G as the opponent for 100 Thieves. But they answered every question, everything that you wanted to see from 100 Thieves coming off of the achievements that they got last split where they absolutely beat the expectations and showed you a little bit more as possible with this team start of the summer split is a continuation of that and that's exactly what you want yeah just need again better decision making out of sniper but it's only his second split he's going to continue to grow here in summer and cloud nine listen we're going to be expecting this whole summer split the ceiling to be even higher than the incredibly high ceiling that we had in spring they should be in the conversation alongside somebody like G2 or Fnatic as best team in the West when we're heading to Worlds. And that's the should be is the big important part in that sentence for the LCS and what we've seen from Cloud9 and looking at this week with Dignitas in that best of three matchup. Yes, this gets you that vote of confidence for now that you are not there in the back. Not best of the West yet. But you're not in that best of the West type of conversation just quite yet. You need to keep improving week after week. If you stay at this type of level, still a couple of slops, kill, still a little bit of mistakes, absolutely, you're going to find a squad like G2 expecting that bounce back ahead of you. The two other Western squads we're alluding to are a tier above in that C tier when you're talking about Team Liquid and Fnatic. Obviously, TL, the defending champs, beat Fnatic in that MSI best of, and since then, Fnatic have looked a cut above the rest of the LEC squads. Both these teams definitely deserving of getting a notch above of their peers. I think both of them are showing uh, the exact type of response you want from MSI for these teams, and especially with where they should be growing. That's what you want to be seeing. So for Fnatic, absolutely, you are seeing that little bit of confidence of, okay, we were hanging. We were deserving to be around in these teams and, and, and competing around them. But then you also have that fire of, well, we made mistakes and we slipped up when we couldn't slip up anymore at this event. And that was the big problem for them. So you've seen a little bit of a cleanup, a bit of a fire bounce back and push back, looking for revenge for them. And then on the other side, when you're talking about Team Liquid, a team that went to MSI, you know, maybe didn't have the early success, early performances, but did have competitive showings later on and did show growth 
for the two youngest and most important players for this team in APA and Yon. And I think that absolutely continued into the matchup against FlyQuest, seeing both of them being top performers for this team with the team. And again, yeah, that's the biggest thing is the hyperbolic chamber for training that these international events are because Yon and APA returned to the LCS and they're, you know, even matching them against the best in the LCS. If you're going up against JoJo, if you're going up against Berserker, you're going, I mean, we were going up against Guma and Faker. Like, <laughs> come on, this is way easier. Now it's going to step up next in the next couple of weeks for sure. Because when yeah. you're talking about FlyQuest, yes, there is an overall expectation of team power and specifically in the LCS, but you do need to check that against, well, it was, you know, Quad playing his debut game and Masu, who hasn't necessarily impressed or especially in the case of this, you know, MSI comparison, is not having the response from that MSI experience and exposure the way that Jan has been able to build upon his international experience. Other two squads here in this C tier, uh, World Elite, you might say, wow, they're just two and two. They really deserve to be this high up. Both those losses are to B BLG. They have been leaps and bounds ahead of everyone else in their group. And the last BLG series was the craziest game one that we've had. I'm even throwing in spring games with this defending the Nexus once against three super minions and then losing in heartbreak at the Nexus on the other side. But it was an incredibly close game. World Elite has also been a surprise start in summer. This is fantastic. What a story this has been for World Elite to really rise up and show that they got this type of power. One of the teams, one of the prime organizations i think a lot of people have been missing in the last couple of years of the lpl to be at that forefront to be in that top tier zone this squad is pushing that type of territory right now you might say as you mentioned two and two not that's not pushing anything that's just pushing 500 at this point but the way that they pushed a team like blg in that series and the way that they have clearly shown that level up this split that is what i'm buying in that is where we don't have question marks on a squad like WE all the way up here, the way that you do have question marks, you do have Fraud Watch on for NIP, on for LNG down in the A tier. Yeah, and a lot of that is just the level of competition because that Fraud Watch group, the whole group is full of uh, probably four frauds. We're, we're going to give a shout out to one of them a little bit later. But then Hanwha Life obviously had a tough loss uh, to D Plus to kick things off. They beat DRX in three. We just need more games out of them. I think they're going to be a better team than C tier quality as the season progresses. Yeah, that has to be the expectation where we're seeing here and where they're going to be able to grow. Because when we see Hanwha Life, we see what they did last split and thinking that, all right, you should have more time to gel together, to integrate, find a way to operate optimally as this group now. That's my thing for Hanwha Life, and I need to see them at the forefront of that challenge for the second best team in, in the LCK. Excuse me. Then we move in to the B tier, which is the big dogs of the global power rankings. And I say big dogs, and then you see Kwong Dong Freaks and Anyone's <laughs> Legend. Wait a sec. Is this, did we get these in the wrong order? No, we didn't. We talked about that fraud group in the LPL. There's only one team that's not a fraud. And it's anyone's legend sitting pretty at four and one and they have the second fastest game time in the lpl and all the main statistical categories they hold up against the current big three in the lpl right now now the important thing about all that taken into consideration and i want to say i'm putting my check mark i'm putting the validation on that for what uh what has been going on so far for anyone's legend you move into what is the next stage what is the next proving ground for anyone's legend going to be, well, it's absolutely going to be in that next tier for the LPL split, where we stop having this fearless draft set up and you move in to the separated zones of the losers and the top level teams. And that's where anyone's, curve. <laughs> anyone's legend has bought themselves a ticket into that type of territory, into that event for the LPL. The problem is they're absolutely going to have to prove it another time around when they get to that type of zone because having the group, having those frauds in your group and putting up the records, putting up the statistics that you are, yes, for real, but it's going to be checked for that question mark against these very best of the best teams in the LPO. And that's really, they need more tests because they've proved themselves time and time again in their current group. Guangdong Freaks, what a start to them. They're finally reaching that potential that we've seen. Three and zero now. Another 
somewhat clean 2-0 against the bottom Peter Nongshim, but obviously they're riding high off a win over KT Rolster, and they look more confident than ever and are looking like they could be top four this split. One of the most amazing things that I'm seeing about this KDF team and why that confidence is so high on them is I'm looking in the mid lane and I'm looking at Bulldog. And normally you've heard us talk about Bulldog a couple times now about KDF and his potential and that we believe that he is a very good player and one that will emerge as an even better player in the future. The question is, well, it's not really because he's popping off. It's not because his performances are so fantastic. It's because he's playing a more facilitating, more supportive role for this team where he looks more comfortable and isn't asked of so much for this team. And he's got the backup now on the team to dish out that damage to lead the charge for the team when you look down to the bottom lane. That is the difference for me for Kwang Dong Freaks. Last squad in this B tier carries into the first team on our A tier, and that is obviously the D plus T1 head to head we had. I was ready! D plus in that game one, they look fully in control. I'm going, they're going to go 3 0 with wins against Hanwa and T1. It's the D plus era, but they obviously felt it, got a little bit shaky three straight times. Players get caught out. King is flashing in place to let T1 get a Baron and back into this game. It's almost like T1, it's still a world class team, even though they got smashed by Gen G. Almost, 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 almost like that type of situation. D plus versus T1, yes, hot and fresh out of this post match. D plus finding themselves on the losing end of it. It's impossible to find what is the true story here because there was so much going on in this series, specifically game one, where you find positives, the good signs, the things we saw from D plus that helped them get the victory, the edge over Han Will Life just a few, you know, days ago. Now you step into this series and you have the tenacity, you have that will angle from T1 where they just will themselves to find the right spot in a team fight, the right one to get that pushback and put you back on your heels. And from that point on, T1 exactly knows how to close things out. They close out game one, they head to game two, and we've got now the biggest disappointment in this one is the draft that came through from D plus because it's this is- It's supposed to just be the LCS that does this. This is a draft that puts you down where the LCS is ranked, down towards the A tier type of, you know, D tier zone of this power rankings. Taking the Nidalee, Canyon has been fooling everybody that's possible to play this champion and have success because nobody, nobody I'm seeing around the world having success on this Nidalee. And you are certainly not going to have success uh, for Lucid on that Nidalee if you're rolling with just Twisted Fate in the top side as your only CC to really reliably set up the Nidalee. That's not a lot of setup, my man. Yeah, the case for this draft was when they try and get a Baron after getting a pick and you're going, who is tanking Baron? Nidalee? Nami? They have zero front line on this comp and they just never had any chance of winning this second game. So T1 gets the sweep to, yeah, prove that they are still a legit squad uh, alongside these other two teams in this A tier top esports i'm just I, i'm not i'm done with their games even just let me see them in the next round they've proven themselves time and time again in this group that they are leaps and bounds better than the other three squads and jdg it took them three games because they had a little for fun throw against thunder talk but right now kanavi's the front runner for mvp and the only guy in the world who seems to be able to play nidalee alongside canyon and no, this is not a repeat of the last three years episodes from League Unlock that we are talking about a guy like Navi being an MVP forerunner in the jungle in the LPL for what he is doing right now with JDG. I love looking at what you mentioned with top esports because it, you're right. There is nowhere else for them to go at this point in the split. You are stuck in that neutral position because you are so clearly better than everybody in your group so that's the expectation and you are waiting to get the challenge teams like a blg like a jdg but you're gonna have to wait until you get into that next segment of the lpl split so that's where we are with them but man oh man these lpl squads bringing the heat 
into A tier. Yeah, and you know, top esports now already clinched into that winner side when we do eventually progress into that next round. And also for JDG, Sheer back in the lineup, pulling around 1v2s immediately on the Skarner. So we've been calling for it, took a few series, but I hope he's getting more and more starts. This early summer placements in the easier group is when he should get this guy to hit it running so that he can really reach that ceiling as a rookie that we expect later on in the split. Then we get two teams left. They each get their own tier because it just feels right. BLG sitting pretty in that S tier, even though they had some fun against World Elite. They had no business maybe even winning that game, but they still ultimately look like the best team in the LPL. But Gen G deserves an S plus all to themselves as the defending MSI champs. That is the remarkable thing about these two teams is you can watch BLG in the LPL. You can see what they do. And I'm giving BLG a 9, 9.5 out of 10 type of grading on where they are power-wise right now because I think Knight obviously isn't hitting his biggest marks. And also, Mal's a hard duty. Just, just say it. If, if we mentioned a scout on Mal's a hard duty, you better believe we did not miss Knight also being stuck on Malzahar duty, something to keep track of with this BLG team. But you watch them play and you go, how the hell did anybody beat these guys? This is ridiculous. They are so good. They are so talented and so in sync on what they are doing. But then you see Gen G and you realize everything is right in the world yeah. because of course watch there's your answer. one series for Gen G. Yeah. Holy cow, this is what a combination on this team. Of course, we talked about it many times throughout the spring split, but this is the Gen G that is operating almost at peak perfection because you are getting contributions from that bottom lane. You already mentioned earlier in the week, Pays and Lehens having a little, you know, uh, fake sit down to say, hey, I'm nutso. You're going to play nutso with me and we're going to make nutso damage happen on the board. And then you move into that top side. And of course, you can't mention that top side without mentioning his buddy, Mr. Canyon, in the jungle and what he's been doing. We already talked about him and his effect on the rest of the world in the meta with the Nidalee pick. Well, uh, he, there's a reason why. And he has made it work for him and he has made it work for Keen up in the top side on the Skarner and the other picks to help him layer down that CC, unlike what we saw from D plus Kia earlier. There's a reason a lot of teams are trying to copy what Gen G is doing right now. But that is it for League Unlock. Erica Mark here with you, beauties. Thanks for hanging out, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.